All right, everyone, I want to welcome you to the AdCast. The AdCast is the podcast for marketers and advertisers. Every now and then, we will interview some newsmakers and some folks who actually shake things up on the scene. In this next episode of the AdCast, we're going to have State Senator Mr. Marlon Kimpson. If you remember, Marlon was very pivotal in the fight to help folks in the NCAA, ladies and gentlemen, be able to earn off their name, image, and likeliness. In the episode coming up, I don't want you to miss it. We're going to have a nice conversation about the pros, the cons, what's next, and what Marlon feels is going to be a real force in the fight for NIL. This is the AdCast. All right, everyone, we welcome you to an edition. I want to say this is special because this is the first time that we've recorded a live episode of the AdCast inside of our new production studio, and we have none other than one that needs no introduction. I want to get this right. <laughs> Not the politician, but the public servant, first parent, parent, then public servant, State Senator, Mr. Marlon Kimson, we want to thank you for being here and thank you for being a guest. Thank you so much, Eric, for having me. And let me just say I'm proud of you and your company. Uh, I had an opportunity to tour uh, this amazing facility. Uh, several years ago, we yeah. were in your <laughs> other amazing facility, but this tops it all. And so that's a testament to your work ethic and testament to your growing client base. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'll be a big cheerleader Thank uh, you. for you, as I've been in the past, but more so now Yeah. Uh, as you turn this page on your business profile. I appreciate that. And, and I, I think that I thank you for that. And I'm going to receive that and then also share that with our, our amazing team. Because, right. uh, you know, there's a lot of times where people see things in the world publicly and they think I'm this, just this genius. But sometimes it's them uh, combating me or teaching yeah. me and telling me on the other end. And, and they help to uh, make us have a perfect image or a really good image. And I thank them for it. And I thank you for that too much. It means, it means a lot. Uh, it means a right. lot. A, right. a whole lot coming from you, man. Right. Thank you. All right. Um, today, man, we're, you know, there's a lot that's happened. Yeah. You know, you didn't just start this fight that's yesterday, right. last week, or, you know, when it was a hot topic, you mm -hmm. were fighting it before it was in the news and people were saying, what's wrong with Kimson? Why is he doing it? What's, what's, what's happening here? You and some yeah. others, man, you know, so you have some history on this and we're talking about NIL. And for those who don't know it, it's name, image, and likeliness for collegiate athletes in the mm -hmm. NCAA being paid. Now, a lot's happened. Let's let's go back down memory lane sure. before. Sure. Uh, because at some point, you know, this all started, you know, I watched this documentary before, and, and, and you know the history of this, you know, uh, way back when the NCAA was established in even the early, late 60s, or early 70s, and they kind of labeled them student athletes mm -hmm. and said, we can't pay them, we can't pay them. But then, you know, the NCAA, like we know, it's become this multi-billion dollar franchise. Correct. Correct paid off of the backs and the hard work of a lot of these student athletes that fill arenas mm -hmm. and stadiums up to 60, 70,000 people. Mm -hmm. There were games, video games created using their image and their mm -hmm. likeliness, and they weren't able to get a cent. Mm -hmm. You had these NCAA uh, authorities, mm -hmm. you know, and they were able to negotiate TV deals because back then, TV deals weren't a big part of it, but look at it now. Oh, it, yeah. it is big. Think of something like a like a March Madness, or even you know when you get into the NCAA the 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 football championship, NCAA football championship, and how big that is now. And we know football breeds, you know, and, and is actually the leader in revenue for a lot of these schools. Correct. So lots happened, Marlon. Lots happened. What are your thoughts from then till now? Well, it's a great day. Uh, for the collegiate athletes, uh, both men and women, uh, who are using their intellectual property, mm -hmm. uh, their own name. Now, if you can just imagine for a moment that someone else or some other institution is able to profit from your own name and you aren't able to profit from your own name, the mm -hmm. use of your name. And so uh, while I applaud the NCAA for making this step, uh, really this step is long overdue, and we aren't giving these athletes anything that they 
quite frankly, are entitled to. Okay. You should be entitled to the use of your name. You should be entitled to the use of your picture. You should be able to walk across the street uh, like any other student who's on scholarship, walk across the street from a USC facility mm-hmm. and endorse a product. Uh, you ought to be able to spend your own time earning revenue using your own name, likeness, and image. So mm-hmm. while it's a great day, uh, the NCAA didn't voluntarily do this, as you mentioned. Yep. When I first joined the General Assembly back in 2014, uh, I filed uh, a bill that incorporated name, likeness, and image, but also had a number of other components. Right. Uh, and where we are now is I still, if you read the Supreme Court opinion and the, uh, the c- c- concurring opinion by Justice Kavanaugh, of all people, <laughs> uh, he was brilliant. Uh, he recognized uh, that the NCAA was operating a illegal cartel, and that's a follow-up to Judge Claudia Wilkins' opinion of the Ninth Circuit In the old Bannon case, that's the gaming case where uh, UCLA player, player, Mr. O'Bannon, I can't remember his first name, but he found out from his son that his own name, likeness, and image was being used by a toy company uh, in a video game. Mm -hmm. Uh, He had never received any revenue from it. Uh, It wasn't really subject to NCAA guidelines because he had already graduated. Mm -hmm. Uh, but if you think for a moment how this case has evolved from that litigating that case in California and now uh, more than 20 states right. uh, before the NCA acting, passing name, likeness, and image, we've come a long way on behalf of the players. Uh, but there's still a lot of work to do. And back to the Kavanaugh opinion, I think that opinion leaves open the door to do more on behalf of the student athlete. Wow. Um, So what we're talking about today is name, likeness, and image and the ability of a player to endorse products. Mm -hmm. Uh, Keep in mind there was a New York uh, Times article uh, before the NCAA passed this uh, piece of uh, policy where cheerleaders uh, were endorsing products with Alabama and South Carolina paraphernalia uh, and other Uh, colleges and universities, and getting paid for it. So the coaches earn multi-million dollar salaries, in the case of Dabo Sweeney, over $9 million a year, uh, and that's not including endorsements. Uh, In the case of Will Muschamp, uh, at least $4 million a year. Um, The assistant coaches, uh, their salaries rival corporate barons and CEOs on Wall Street Mm -hmm. collectively. Uh, the cheerleaders. So everybody got paid. And now I'm pleased to say that as a result of a number of states uh, passing legislation and also a seminal uh, Supreme Court opinion, um, the NCAA recognizes that students don't shed their property rights in their name, yeah, likeness, and image simply by putting on a uniform. A long time ago, the argument was they are getting a degree. And that was the trade-off. They get an education was the trade-off. They get scholarships. So what, what do you say to that argument? Because still, there's there's some people and some coaches, right, mm-hmm. who said, I'm done. You know, this is going to ruin football or ruin basketball, ruin sports, collegiate sports for mm-hmm. men, young men and young ladies. Mm-hmm. So what do you what do you say to that? Well, argument? first of all, uh, Dabo Sweeney said that. Yeah, I didn't. I hadn't seen him resign yet. Right. Uh, <laughs> uh, and so, you know, it's a sign of the times. Uh, it won't ruin the sport. Mm-hmm. Uh, we will uh, have the first football kickoff uh, in a few weeks. Uh, I suspect the stands will be packed and filled. Yeah. Um, the only difference is, is the players now are allowed to, outside their school activities, walk across the street and do things that other students. The, the NCAA player is no different. Uh, who, the NCAA players who, who's on scholarship, to address your scholarship point, mm-hmm. is no different than the 
physics student who has a 4.0, that's home full scholarship, but creates intellectual property for Apple computers. Correct. He or she can sell that uh, intellectual idea uh, to a corporation and trade in and cash in on their value. Mm. We got to remember that these students are not allowed to work while they're in school. They can't do anything else. Uh, they, they, the average time that they spend on the sport, on the, on the uh, sport associated with either football, basketball, or even soccer and, and, and other types of sports are uh, more than American Work Week. At one time I did the math, it was about 43 hours a week. Right. Uh, that's more than American Work Week. And because of that uh, conscious uh, focus, uh, not just playing, uh, but training, watching film, uh, they're essentially outside of the workforce, can't work at Pizza Hut, can't do what the traditional work study that the traditional student does. Yeah. And so, um, yes, they're on scholarship, but there are a lot of other uh, students on scholarship, full scholarship, whether academic or w otherwise. Yep. Uh, and these students earn a lot of money for the universities. I've looked at the P&Ls the profit and loss statements of the University of South Carolina and the University of Clemson, they both respectively earn over $100 million in revenue from the athletic department, primarily wow. driven uh, by basketball and football. Right. Uh, and so all, all, all this is doing uh, is the NCAA and college athletic sports is evolving with time, mm -hmm. when you you talked about when the NCAA was first formed and member clubs uh, or a, an organization to house uh, members, uh, the, at that time the 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 coach of football was also the PE teacher, or taught science class, uh, had other duties than coaching football. Uh, correct. Uh, now you hire a coach. It's He's a, a coach. Your coach, and that's all you do. Um, so we have evolved the game, and it's it's time for, that the game evolves uh, for the players, and I think that's a major state step we've done. And 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 final point is, and I it is probably not the best analogy, but you know, Little Caesars. When you go in Little Caesars, they give you two pizzas. Right. Uh, so when you make pizza, you can spread out. Uh, the supply chain, uh, in order to create more than just one pizza. I submit that the universities really aren't uh, uh, incurring more costs to educate these students. Mm -hmm. uh, these are the same teachers that they use 10, 15 uh, years ago. 10, 15 years ago, and for multiple students. Uh, and so... Uh, while a scholarship is important, these students get food. Now, they may have a different cafeteria, but the same cafeteria workers prepare the football players' food and prepare the student that's paying tuition food. They just shift assignments, move over to a different facility. So the cost, if you look at it, the costs are spread on to the student's who are paying the tuition, and there's really not a lot more, except the coaches, mm -hmm. a lot more money being spent to educate these students. They're the same teachers that teach the general population. Mm -hmm. So we can get into breaking down what the scholarship actually means, mm -hmm. but cost-wise, it's not that much more to the universe. Yeah, I, I also want to make a point. Like, we may reference, you know, basketball and football mm -hmm. a lot, and we, we both recognize there are a lot of other sports there that contribute to the university. But we also, I just want people to know, like, we talk in general, we're not excluding anyone. We're, we're just talking about the main drivers, you know, the main of, drivers. What, of what brings in revenue. But, 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 but let me, on that point, the, uh, you know, the under this legislation, all sports are included. Right. So it's, all it's not included. just for basketball Correct. players, the swim players, the uh, swim team, the equestrian team. And keep in mind the $100 million uh, primarily generated by uh, University of South Carolina football uh, 
uh, women's basketball is a high driver. Give shots I, out I, to Don I, Staley. And, and uh, <laughs> yeah, Don Staley and Aja Wilson, uh, who grew up in, in my church in Columbia. But other than those basketball and football, the revenue subsidizes the equestrian team. No, absolutely. Subsidizes the golf team. There's, there's no doubt about and, and it. And so you wouldn't have those sports. And in some cases, those uh, athletes have gone to the Olympics and in some cases, for example, tennis and have been able to accept some forms of compensation. That's sport. true. And so, look, it's a day of reckoning for the NCAA. We're not done. I'll talk about my plans later to, mm-hmm. to continue the fight because there's a lot more to fight for now. I think also what people need to give some respect to some of these, these athletes for, these professional athletes, what we should call them instead of student athletes, um, is that some of these guys who are playing football, mm-hmm. they're helping pay for college for some of the other students down the line. Right. You can't give a scholarship unless you got the money to be able to give a scholarship or you're either getting it in, in revenue or endowments, one or the other. Right. And you are, you may have that person on the football team using that for an example. He's paying for the guy in the physics department to be able to get that scholarship. Correct. So, and, and me, I, I'm for it. Mm-hmm. I, I'm for it. And I believe in, there's a lot of people where they don't like it. I am for it yeah. because you have to give them their credit and their respect and words too. Let, let me let me say this. Uh, it's interesting that both the University in South Carolina and uh, Clemson stood at the microphone with the governor a couple of weeks ago. I wasn't invited, by the way, uh, <laughs> but it did, it wasn't about me. Even though I had introduced this concept, they had a they had a, a, a legislation signing for the name, likeness, and image bill. But when I introduced this bill, they were vehemently against it. Yeah. It really, the market drove us to do what we did because Florida was starting this year in California. California, Gavin Newsom. That's right. Right. We had signed it. Uh, uh, I think California was actually first and then Mm -hmm. followed by Florida. So if we wanted to be competitive in SEC and ACC, 20 other states had moved before us. This was market-driven. Right. And while I appreciate uh, the concerns for the student athlete, uh, I do think they are concerned. I'm not saying they aren't concerned, but it would have been very helpful uh, in 2014 to have their support then. Now, I will say Dr. Pastides, uh, president of the university, actually he's now president again, interim, but he was president during the time I filed that legislation. He actually testified uh, in the uh, O'Bannon case, mm-hmm. and his testimony was actually pretty helpful to the judge uh, ruling, uh, supporting uh, that uh, that the cost of a t- the, the the NCA schools could do more than cost of attendance. So he at least expressed some early testimony that that gave the impression he was supportive of name likeness and image back then mm-hmm. but as a whole the universities opposed that legislation until they were driven by the market competition the to market moved it. it the market moved so what what does someone like a, a reggie bush say about all this well you know <laughs> uh they didn't have that opportunity mm-hmm. uh, I, but but i think people who have been following uh, the discussion are in large part uh, mm-hmm. supportive. I've seen tweets uh, from various uh, athletes, including LeBron James, supportive of these young Absolutely. men and women. Uh, but a lot of things have changed. Uh, I was talking to a law partner of mine. I'm a partner at Motley Rice Law Firm, and um, he was telling me I was complaining about my iPhone, I think it's a seven, but I don't, I don't know. He said, <laughs> "Time well, to upgrade, Marlon." Yeah, I, 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 is, is there a new one? Yeah, yes. Is it, okay, so I got to get that. He said, "Well, you complaining, but back then we had a bag phone, and I had to pay for mine." And so, the athletes who didn't have that opportunity, by a large part, are supportive of these newer mm-hmm. athletes who do because the game has changed. Correct. Uh, and so, uh, uh, that's just life. What do you what do you see as some of the pros and some of the cons of name it be athletes yeah. being paid for name image sure. and likeliness? What what are some of the pros and cons? Well, let me start with the con, the, the obvious con. Uh, 
Uh, now you're going to have students um, that may not have the level of financial sophistication to deal with mm -hmm. what could be arguably large sums of money. I just read uh, on my way over here where the Nick Saban had a press conference earlier this week, and he talked about the the uh, starting quarterback for Alabama has now he never played a snap because he was the backup to the quarterback. I don't remember names, mm -hmm. but the previous quarterback who's now gone on to the NFL. But he's you never – Tua or – No, no, no. There was one. Oh, uh, behind Tua. Mac, okay, got Mac it. Brown. Yeah. Or, uh, excuse me on his name. But the new quarterback, the, the old quarterback is going to the pros, and the guy who's never played a snap is about to start. He might have played, you know, uh, when the lead quarterback was out. But mm -hmm. collectively, he is set to earn about a million dollars in name, image, and likeness uh, deals. Uh, he's got one with Cash App. And so, you know, the, the issue is going to be how does he manage that money? How does someone who... Keep in mind, uh, over 85% of these student athletes come from very uh, Poverty distressed homes. homes. Yeah. Yeah. So now all of a sudden, many of them are signing deals for hundreds of thousands of dollars. And at least in South Carolina, Clemson, and I've read uh, University of South Carolina's position statement on they're going to provide an educational component. I think that's good. Uh, to help manage the money. Uh, and I think Clemson will be doing something. So we got to make sure that these young men and women mm -hmm. um, are um, being wise with the expenditures. But, you know, hey, they're kids, so yeah. they're going to make some mistakes. The second thing is, you know, with money and endorsement deals comes a lot of new friends. Oh, I think yeah. Drake has this song, and, I, I don't, you know, I'm not going to sing it. Um Unless you want me to. Do it. But, sing uh, it. Sing it, Mom. <laughs> this is the first says, I, here. I don't have no new friends. Uh, all of a sudden, you're going to have a lot of new friends. And keep in mind, these there are a lot of other eligibility requirements in the NCAA. Mm -hmm. So it, 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 it increases the likelihood for students who are not disciplined to violate uh, the code of conduct, if you will, no, understood. of the NCA rules and regulations uh, uh, when you introduce the element of, of money. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, these players will have a lot more resources to do things they Correct. couldn't do in, in yeah. the past. So yeah. they've got to keep that in mind. The, 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 the strength of it is, look, we are, uh, I think the last time I crunched these numbers, which was a long time ago, but the NCA collectively, uh, back in 2015, earned more than twelve billion dollars. Billion, billion dollars. Uh, and at that time, that figure annually, and that time, that figure rivaled the National Hockey League and the National NBA, uh, the NBA league, wow. in terms of collective revenue. Mm -hmm. uh, and as we talked about it earlier, I mean, if you just look at the TV contracts in 2014, the uh, in ESPN paid the NCAA uh, about $7.5 billion for television rights on certain games. Yeah, and then the viewership is higher than the NFL. V viewership higher than the NFL. Uh, they were able to move the member teams, the D1 teams, from – about $28 million in revenue from the, that NCAA, in ESPN contract to mm -hmm. about $50 million in revenue. Get out of town. So there's a lot of money. There's a lot of money uh, going to the NCAA. Mm -hmm. The first time that the player is able to share in some of that, n not, not necessarily that revenue, but for the fact that he or she can now earn, have some part of the right. industry, uh, is is monumental. Uh, is something that, quite frankly, they deserve. Now, the next phase of this fight needs to be uh, some of that revenue that they're generating for these colleges and universities. And in that regard, I wow. have filed a bill 
And before I left session, after reading the Kavanaugh opinion, because it opened the door, it said that no other industry in America can 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 get this much money and not, not have pay to out. pay the people who generate it. That's right. Now this is a conservative judge appointed by uh, uh, those who shall remain former, former President <laughs> Don Trump, uh, who's recognizing Jesus. This is a lot of money, and so I think personally, because your name, likeness, and image, you're entitled to that. Mm-hmm. So let's now talk about some of the revenue. Why can't, for example, these student athletes be compensated for their time like a work-study student? I mean, when I was in college, uh, I didn't do it, but I had many friends who worked in the library, Mm -hmm. worked in a science lab. And some of your money's going back to pay tuition. Yep. Exactly. So, So the question is, can we compensate? minimum wage for the four, more than 43.5 number of hours that they spent on the field, can we compensate those students modest sum for that time? Mm. The second thing I'd like to remember, most of these students don't go on to play professional football. That's true. I think it's over 90-some percent. And, and some of them, if they go, they're banged up from college. I mean, you think of uh, Marcus Lattimore. Oh, a, uh, he's a great a, example. Uh, a g- example. A great human being went into the league, but when he went into the league, um, you know, he couldn't go as high as he should have gone. I because think he was two years. He had, he had injuries. Yeah, yeah. So, so not just football, but basketball, tennis. You got lifelong industries, mm-hmm. in, in, injuries. Uh, I've set up a matrix in my bill that creates a uh, an insurance trust fund to vest after graduation. So we deposit a certain amount each year. And if a student graduates in good academic standing, he or she can get that sum and use it for the medical benefits going forward mm. for their life care. It won't... It oh. won't it won't solve the medical issues they'll have, but at least they'll have a little nest egg. And yeah. Using some of that billion-dollar revenue that they have generated uh, collectively uh, on their, their football, basketball, sport, whatever sport team. Do, do you see arguments kind of coming from this? Oh, where, man. where Let me tell uh, you. And, and I think it's, it's going to be so much because then let's just say if there's a big uh, national championship Auburn versus University of South Carolina. Let's just let's just say that. Using that for you, example, you, you, you real optimistic. Uh, yeah, I know, <laughs> I know. It won't happen. I know, I won't happen. Just using it out yeah, there. Um, yeah. So if it's Auburn yeah. and South Carolina, yeah. and you have this is a huge game, mm-hmm. right? Uh, and you have uh, a quarterback who plays for South Carolina. Mm-hmm. Now he's going to get more endorsements because he's going into the big, big game mm-hmm. against, you know, in this national championship. Mm-hmm. Can he say, you know what, this game is going to have 40 million viewers, and I know what it means for revenue for you. Mm-hmm. I want a piece of that. Can he do that? Well, you know, look, uh, no legislation or policy is perfect. And uh, one thing I'm I'm cognizant of is you still got to have a team. Yeah. And the fact is, is that that player is going to make more than the linebacker or the front tackle who blocked for him right. when he when he or she he or she uh, it could be a female uh, sports team member like Ozzie Any, Wilson or, yep. or whomever else leaves. They're gonna make more. That's mm-hmm. just the market. But I think what I'm talking about here with this matrix is paying them all the same. Got it. Uh, like like the work study student got it for their time associated with the sport i spend 50 hours watching film on the field i get uh you know 725 750 whatever the prevailing minimum wage is um or we can set it at a higher level because quite frankly i think it ought to be higher it ought to be 15 dollars an hour 20 dollars an hour but i think we pay them all the same like they're punching a clock uh, and then with the uh, the athletic uh, insurance or health care fund, we pay them all the same okay. and that vests. But there's an argument, yes, they are contributing more. They are 
filling the stands. Uh, but I think at this juncture, it's appropriate to treat them all the same because we know now they got name, likeness, and image. So they're going to get what the market dictates when they walk across the street. Got it. And let me just be clear. When I say walk across the street, uh, the state law, uh, and, and the NCAA has deferred to state law on this issue, prohibits a student from using the backdrop of state property for these endorsement deals. Got it. So uh, they, can't, they can't film commercials for Baker Motors on USC's property. Correct. Now, USC, interestingly, has a policy under their name, likeness, and image scheme for the school, they can actually wear a, a, a University of South Carolina jersey. Really? Uh, when they walk across the street and do that. So they have allowed the student athletes who do deals uh, to wear paraphernalia from the school. And that's smart because it promotes the it, school. It helps the school as well. Uh, th- keep in mind, these student athletes are the chief marketing agents for the university. I mean, you probably never heard of Gonzaga until you heard, you saw their football, <laughs> their basketball team, right. okay? So when you you talk to anybody in recruitment, if you got a good sports team, people come into that school. Yep. Uh, and I, academics is, you know, not always the first choice. And that's a topic uh, I want to talk about, too. Yeah, not always the first choice. Uh, Clemson, on the other hand, they have uh, forbidden these athletes to wear uh, their uh, – their intellect property, their their jerseys, uh, and I respect the decision either way. I'm just making a distinction in the two uh, policies of the two universities in South Carolina. This is a good topic, Morgan. Yeah, yeah. man, it's it's good. We've I, been talking about it for a while, and I'm, I'm excited to discuss it with you. I want us to take a quick break, and then I want us to come back, and I want to talk about recruitment and how this can affect recruitment. This is the AdCast. I want to welcome you back to the AdCast. I am with the public servant, uh, state senator, and also attorney, uh, Mr. Marlon Kimson from the District uh, 42 in South Carolina here. So, again, thank you for being here. We, Anyone who's just kind of catching in, we talked about a lot of different things here. Talked about some pros and cons, and then when we left off, we were talking about how uh, being paid for name, image, and likeliness could possibly, you know, affect recruitment. Mm-hmm. So do you, in your opinion, in your opinion, do you find it where a student may say, I want to go to another university because I have a better chance of uh, getting endorsement deals in my freshman or sophomore year, you know? Yeah. Um, you know, I think you, that element was already uh, existent. In other words, if you could be the second string quarterback at the uni- uh, at the University of Alabama mm-hmm. versus being the starting quarterback at the University of South Carolina uh, there are some pros and cons to that uh, quite frankly many uh, would choose to go to Alabama because mm-hmm. they, they would likely go to the championship so I think at some level uh, that situation existed. I think what the name, likeness, and image legislation does, however, is it may drive students to bigger cities uh, because uh, whereas uh, being in a small rural town uh, versus being in the city of Atlanta Mm -hmm. or uh, the city of Miami, uh, you have a lot more businesses, local bi- businesses yep. that may want you to walk across the street uh, and endorse their products. Uh, you have a lot more commerce. Uh, and that, particularly for players who won't have the larger deals, the cash app deals right. or the Amazon deals, that local commerce may somewhat drive uh, their decision. So, the reality is uh, now that all schools can do it, mm-hmm. um, it, it sort of levels the playing field in a sense. Uh, but there will be some conscious decisions that the student athlete has to make. What's the what's the biggest market for 
right. you know, my potential. Mm-hmm. Uh, and some people may choose to be in a smaller pond because they can get uh, more opportunities. They, they, they're the big man or big big lady on campus. Yeah. Versus being in a, in a in a bigger pond where you have some more talented athletes and the the deals gravitate to those the, to those players. So we'll see. We just don't know how it's, it's all going to roll out. But I think you're correct to say recruitment is going to be an issue. It would have been more of an issue had the NCAA not passed this this legislation making right. it applicable to all member schools because some states were moving forward with mm-hmm, it. Mm-hmm. And so if I'm a player at Wando and the state of North Carolina has approved NIL, uh, then I'm going to the state of North Carolina versus well, South Carolina true. that didn't. So, true. so so at least we don't have that tension. Uh, now everybody or each state uh, allows their players to do it. Uh, but uh, it, so it's a lot better than it, what it, what it could have been. So how about how would that affect like sponsorships? Now you, you mentioned we mentioned one of the athletes who have like a cash app. Mm-hmm. What if uh, you know cash app says I'm going to go through that student now because it's less expensive for me to go through that student instead of doing a sponsorship for that university? Yeah. Well, you're going to have some of that. I I think there's no doubt that the opportunity to be on the big screen Mm -hmm. is still the prime opportunity. Correct. Uh, And so um, when you are televised, we saw the game last night, Mm -hmm. uh, the Bucks, by the way, shout out to Chris Middleton from Charleston. Congratulations, Chris. Porter Gal, Mm -hmm. uh, student here, well-respected family. Uh, uh, but we saw that game, and you saw all the television commercials and the memorabilia on the on the on the, on the, on the gymnasium floor. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so, I, I don't think it surpasses the opportunity to be on the big screen, television screen, uh, or live stream. Mm-hmm. Uh, it just it just adds an additional avenue. Uh, for these sponsorship opportunities to benefit, uh, directly benefit the student athletes. I, th- this, I have so many questions about it, you know, and, and it's, well, there are a lot of questions. Yeah, I mean, and, and, and it's I, all and the we work don't, in progress. And, and we don't. This is the first year, so yeah. uh, I mean, I, I'm just telling you what I think, right? And uh, I will tell you, I'm not, you know, I don't follow sports. Uh, there, there's probably somebody on here listening to me saying that guy doesn't know what he's talking right. about. Well, that won't be unique. Sometimes I don't know what I'm talking about, <laughs> but uh, you know, so so there's there, there are a lot of people who are a lot more uh, up to date and and follow this closer than me, uh, and we don't know. Even those people don't know because this is new. It, it's this so is new. cutting edge. Well, will the universities or even some of the laws? I mean, because you know from that end, will there be some things in place to be able to protect those athletes? Well, um, so. The the student athletes have the ability to hire agents in uh, the NCAA's mm-hmm. policy and in our state's policy, uh, and so what we have to hope is the system works. Those agents will have to be registered in the state of South Carolina, file documentation, financial documentation on how much they earned uh, with the various secretaries of state of each state. Mm-hmm. Uh, and there will be, uh, in addition to having a sort of an agent who has a built-in, uh, he or she often have a built-in program to help educate the players. Right. But also the universities I mentioned earlier will be uh, sponsoring educational programs so that these players can have uh, the financial literacy, if you will, to to make prudent decisions. But Again, kids are going to be kids, mm-hmm. uh, and so uh, you know it's their money, uh, and so you know we'll we'll look to see what happens. Right. Um, but you know some of that already happens on college campuses. Uh, where, where'd you go to school? I went to Trident Tech. Okay, I went so, to Trident Tech. So, here. so at Trident, mm-hmm. there, 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 you 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 went to school with kids who had money. Mm-hmm. Okay, at Morehouse, I went to kids who had money. I remember. I used to have to eat in the cafeteria, but the, the rich people or people who had money, they drove a BMW to have a steak. 
And so, uh, uh, you know, economic, the economic disparity and the haves and have-nots have always existed. The guy mm-hmm. with money can throw five keg parties or he's part of a sorority or frater- I'm sorry, he's part of a fraternity mm-hmm. that has the means to do things. And uh, for, for the first time, the student athletes will have a little pocket money. Yeah. Uh, so that, and we hope they spend it wisely, but it's their money. You, you know, this, you, I, when I say you are a true public servant in the word, I, I really mean it because uh, your young ones, they're not athletes in school right now, but this is an issue that's been really, you've been really passionate about it. And, and what, what sparked that for you to say that you, you, you're gonna, you, you got onto this thing like mm-hmm. a pit bull on a bone That's right. and you will not let it go? So, I mean, what was well, it for you? Well, I'll be honest with you. I went to Morehouse College. In fact, I got my school, school shirt on. Uh, and um, we didn't have, uh, you know, uh, the level of competitive sports that big – Division One schools mm-hmm. had so at, at Morehouse we go to the football game or basketball game and uh, most people uh, wanted to know who was going to win the the parking lot party. Right. <laughs> I mean, and nobody knew. We never knew, uh, quite frankly, who won the basketball game or who won the football game. <laughs> right. I mean, that was sort of a side. Uh, it was a, a extracurricular activity. Right. <laughs> So fast forward, um, when I uh, started matriculating at the University of South Carolina for law school, uh, we used to get tickets to the games, and I'd never been to a Carolina football game. Mm-hmm. When I stepped in that stadium and I saw 90,000 people and all that memorabilia, and Steve Spurrier comes in, and the crowd is cheering, and the whole city shut down. I mean, the restaurants were full. They were having parade. I said, man, this is professional football. Yeah. And as I looked around, uh, I felt somewhat uncomfortable because when you look at the demographics of the stadium, they were largely uh, different from the ethnic demographic Mm -hmm. of the people dribbling the ball Mm -hmm. or in the field and and, and throwing the field. And I just felt like this was an economic inequality issue where we have poor people uh, that come from poor backgrounds Um that are the focus of attention on Saturday. Uh, but on Monday morning, the policies that they want to see that would improve their families, mm-hmm. health care for all, raising the limit of minimum wage, that would enable their families to actually afford a ticket to, come to, to travel and see them play, mm-hmm. they, they, we, we didn't follow through on it on Monday. In fact, if the guy dropped the ball, we'd be cursing them out on Monday. After the game. So I just felt like it was a level of economic justice and fairness that needed to be addressed. I was uncomfortable in the stands. And I went, yes. Yeah. But I was I was uncomfortable, so it bothered me. Uh, and I that that that's what really what the passion and I will tell you, even though the bill passed, the name likeness and image passed in the House and the Senate. It started in the Senate. We sent it over to the House. Mm-hmm. It only passed in the Senate by one vote. Slim votes. Very slim. One vote. The House passed it significant. Uh, but the Senate and some of the discussion was troublesome Let's from my that. colleagues. Well, why, why is that? Why, why it, wouldn't it, it, they it, want... Why wouldn't they want a student athlete to be able to earn from their name, image, and likeliness? Why was the discussion... Why was it such a, dis- a despicable discussion? Why? Well, I, I think that, um, first of all, many of them really don't understand how much money is in sports. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we don't have a lot of athletes in our – I mean, I'm pretty gifted. I'm fast, but I was never 
an athlete, but I submit I can run faster than anybody in the in the General <laughs> Assembly, uh, especially in the Senate. And so you got these old school guys who never snapped the football, never dribbled, that don't have an appreciation. And from in their mind, you know, this is th- these these guys. They're there because of us. You know, we fund the University of South Carolina. They owe this to us. Uh, the overseer sort of mentality. Mm-hmm. And you just listen to the discussion. They don't say it. <laughs> but there, there's all this tap dancing. Well, why should we be giving money to these young men and women? And then there were some sensible arguments. It's going to ruin the game. Uh, there's going to be one player that makes more than the other player. Uh, well, that's just life. You know, yeah. I mean, you, you, know, you have a, a standout player. Uh, the tackle doesn't always get the recognition as the quarterback or the running back. I mean, that's just, that's just how life works. And he or she who's throwing the ball or running the ball is probably, if they're good, are going to earn more money than the guy blocking Mm -hmm. for him. Um, so just that whole level of inequality and exploitation uh was generally the discussion on the Senate floor. And again, uh, most of the Democrats, I think all of the Democrats voted for it. We were only Republicans. Mm-hmm. And this kind of tenor of conversation plays out when we talk about raising the minimum wage. Well, why don't they go back to school and earn more money or, or get a further ed- their education? Uh, so you you the 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 discussion of athletics uh, is no different in many ways than the discussion we have when it comes to fighting for the plight of the downtrodden. Quite frankly, uh, those who are working two and three jobs to try to put food on the table, mm-hmm. those who have uh, children with health care needs and uh, disabilities. It's not that they want to uh, work two or three jobs. It's just that those they jobs don't earn <laughs> what they need to uh, provide for their family. So it was a – I would encourage you to go back and listen uh, to many of the members who stood with the governor just a few days ago. Wow. And, and when, when we signed that bill and applauded the bill, but on the Senate floor they fought against the bill. And they had a sudden change of heart. <laughs> Everybody wants to be on TV wow. now associated with it. So. You, so so now people have had a change of heart. Um, this is the fight that you've been fighting for for a long time. But, you know, interesting enough, even when I watch you in it, you, you don't throw yourself in front of it and saying, look at what I did or look at what I've been fighting for. It, it's always for the effort of the other people. That's right. Uh, in fact, uh, so I filed the first bill in 2014. And I knew uh, it wouldn't be received. Well. Gosh, I, man, I just I knew it wouldn't. Uh, but I had the data. I had the data uh, on the numbers, particularly for the the universities on how much was made. Mm-hmm. And I had the experience of sitting in those arenas, uh, watching football and basketball. Um, but the bottom line is, as I mentioned, that I think we are where we are today. Uh, because a federal judge had the uh, confidence to to observe what was going on around in this industry uh, that was largely operating as a uh, volative of our uh, nation's antitrust laws. Uh, It it was operating as an illegal cartel, suppressing uh, people's earned to uh, people's ability to earn revenue off things that they generated. So Claudia Wilkin, federal judge Claudia Wilkin, issued that first opinion. Mm. And it just took a number of years to work its way up to the Supreme Court. We just now, that was in 20, that opinion was in 2013, I believe. And we just now got a ruling from the Supreme Court that what she did was uh, legally correct. Just think how many years have passed. Yeah, so it was eight years. And all of those people who should have had the opportunity to earn uh, that money. Uh, and so I, 
I, I was a visionary then, but my vision was really led by the inequity that I saw. It didn't. I, it just wasn't. I wasn't comfortable with what I saw, mm-hmm. um, and so I kept fighting. And as the years progressed, people started to see because they they watch. We all watch sports. People really started yeah. to take notice. It, it, it's the one. It's the one thing now. You know, it used to be years ago. It used to be news that used to bring people together, mm-hmm. and and then music and now sports. Yeah, it's that thing that brings people together. And I think this year it's going to be much bigger than it's been in a, such a long time Correct. because. We're we, back we, in the stands. We're, we're back in the stands. We didn't have that ability last year. Yeah. We didn't have that ability last year. Yeah. Or sports has changed. Or when you watch the NBA when they first started, I mean, you had digital people in mm-hmm. the crowds. Mm-hmm. It, it's changed. And I think it's, it's, I think, not I think, I know and I hope that the players, uh, the student athletes, that they appreciate uh, folks like you who are fighting for them. And, and fighting for them to be able to protect and earn from their name, image, and likeliness. So, well, that, and, and let me just, let me just, now I remember what I was going to say. Uh, so I got a call um, before the bill that passed was filed. Mm-hmm. Uh, I got a call from someone who works in the state house. I won't say the name because I don't want to get them in trouble. <laughs> and they said, Kimson. I'm glad you are, are, are pushing this bill. It's on the Senate calendar tomorrow in education committee. Now, I, when I filed the bill, I could never get a hearing. I had to fight to get a hearing mm. back in 2014. They finally gave me a hearing and adjourned without addressing the bill. I don't think people understand the process on how it goes for you to be able to introduce you get, a bill. You, gotta get, you, got, you can file a bill. Anybody can file a bill, but the question is whether you can get a hearing. Well, the chairman would never give me a hearing, so I'd go to the Senate floor and I'd start – you know, printing the receipts on the floor, talking about those gobs of money uh, that the universe was. Finally, he says, okay, I'm going to give you a hearing. In the hearing, uh, I was joined by uh, Representative Justin Bamberg to make the case. I had a lot of former athletes with me, uh, and experts flew in to support me. Uh, But they adjourned without addressing the issue. Every year since then, I'd go to the Senate floor and talk about it, but Honestly, my pas- I wasn't as passionate because I knew I had to convince the chairman. So I get a call almost midnight. It says, Kimson, your bill is going to be heard. I said, well, it's not my bill. They said, I said, send me the bill. Said, this is not my bill. Well, it was a Republican who essentially took the bill that I filed in 24, stripped out the stipend, and the trust fund, medical trust fund, and kept the name like this image, put it on the education committee calendar. Fortunately, I showed up. But I showed wow. up because of that, 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 that clerk who was doing the printing for the agenda. They just assumed it was my bill. So I showed up and sat back in the audience. Actually, I, I was on the... They invite all senators, even if you're not on the committee, to sit there. Mm -hmm. And I supported the Republican who essentially used my language in 2014, and I added on as a co-sponsor because it wasn't about me. Mm -hmm. You know, my name, I'm I'm in the minority party, and the General Assembly has been controlled by the majority party for almost two decades so, quite frankly, when you look politically at how you get something done, it's often a Republican because they have the votes and everything breaks down the partisan lines. So I was happy, quite frankly, that one of them came to their senses and moved on this legislation. Oh. And so the bottom line is this wasn't about me. This was about the student athletes who work more than American Work Week who dribble the ball, who carry the football, who enables uh, the equestrian team to exist, the golf team to exist, the coaches to earn multi-million dollar salaries, the assistant coaches to earn multi-million dollar salaries, the universities who have laser tag and barbershops at their athletic facilities, putt-putt golf course, the private jets 
This was really about them, the student athletes who subsidize all these other things I've talked about. Even the cheerleaders who cheer these men and women on are making thousands of dollars associated with the sports that they're cheering. But at no time did these young men and women who dribble the football or dribble the basketball and, and carry the football or do some other sport were allowed to earn some of that revenue. So this victory is for them, mm. uh, and it will continue to fight yeah. for more equality. You deserve a round of applause for that one, that's for <laughs> sure. That's for sure. I, I, um, I want us to take our final break, and I want to come back with something called the lightning round. Okay. You and I, we talked about this before, okay. and I want to see how – different things have gotten in the world of media and marketing because you keep your ear in the ground yeah. and you're pretty savvy. Okay. This is the ACAS. All right. All right. We're back with the public servant extraordinaire, right. state representative and that. also attorney, Mr. Marlon Kimson. Good discussion, man. Yeah. Really good it's discussion. Been great. It's been and great you know, to be with you. You brought up uh, Justin Bamberg in there too. So I'm mm -hmm. going to extend this invitation to him to good. possibly want to talk to him. I know I think him and I are also friends on social media thing, Instagram or something great, like that. Great, great, great lawyer. Yeah, so now yeah. Um, that you, we, we just talked about social media, mm -hmm. uh, I, I like to call this the lightning round to mm -hmm. see what people's opinions are. And I'll start with social media. Mm -hmm. What's your opinion on social media, especially for student-athletes? Well, I think uh, it increases the opportunity to have exposure. Uh, for so long, we used to have to rely on uh, NBC or ABC to call me up to ask me what I think. Mm -hmm. uh, quite frankly, most of the media coverage that I've received, uh, the catalyst for it was a tweet uh, that I sent out or a Facebook post. Yeah. And sometimes they don't even call me to tell me they're going to put post my it. tweet in an article, Yeah. Uh, which is fine with me because I, I have very limited time. So... It's a mechanism that allows, breaks down barriers of entry to, to various industries. So I think it's a powerful tool now. Of course, it can be misused, and True. we're seeing that with the misinformation now uh, put out about vaccines mm -hmm. and other things, misinformation. So uh, I don't know what the solution is, but, um, you know, I'm, I'm in favor of it, uh, to, to speci specifically to be used wisely and for a productive purpose. So, uh, Senator Kimson, what is your favorite social media outlet? Uh, Twitter. Twitter. Your answer remains the same. <laughs> what was it? Last yeah, it time? was Twitter before. Okay, it good, was Twitter good, before. Good. I don't have to write a lot, <laughs> uh, but you kind of kind of think you got so many characters and you have to abbreviate. But you know, Facebook, you can write two or three pages, and uh, it challenges you to, to to say more. But Twitter. How do you see, you know, we talked about television deals for student athletes, not even for student athletes, but for NCAA and universities. Mm -hmm. How important will TV deals be going forward? So how important is television? Um, it's still uh, what we do primarily, although um, the streaming uh, via the Internet mm -hmm. is becoming increasingly popular and it picked up uh, during the COVID uh, during the COVID pandemic. Um, but, you know, for example, all of us last night were gathered around the, the tube watching mm -hmm. uh, the sports. So I think it will continue, television will continue to be a part of our daily lives, and at least at this point um, is still uh, the primary method uh, to view programming. However, uh, you know, there's a younger generation out here now and they get most of their information from the Internet-based services. Yeah. Uh, so it's just a matter of time before that, that stream of uh, production uh, slowly phases out. What do you think of YouTube? Uh, I'm using YouTube more uh, because what I've found is uh, when I have a uh, clip, that I want to get out to the public. Um, uh, so I'll download something, typically a mm -hmm. Senate floor speech, and we will convert the Senate link, which is slow to load, 
into a YouTube link mm-hmm. and then use that thumbnail on on my social media page. Mm-hmm. So uh, certainly still using it. I don't know if it's still the, sort of the uh, primary mode of engaging, uh, particularly with video. But uh, now I don't search YouTube much, um, but I use it to get uh, my clips uh, put out to want. the public domain. Well, I, I want to tell you, man, you are always welcome here. And uh, I enjoyed our discussion today. I, I believe good. not just, you know, the state of South Carolina, but I think the world's going to enjoy this discussion as well, too. Um, so I want to thank you for being an incredible guest. I want to thank you, anyone who's going to be viewing this and thank anyone who's going to be listening to this as well. And if they feel this is something that they want to share or they feel like they want to be a good guest, on, they can be a good guest, contact us. We're at we'll State Center Marlin Kimson. And more importantly, Father. That's right. To some beautiful children, Marley Mr. Marlin Kimson. <laughs> we thank I you for being a, a guest. Shout out. Yeah, shout out to Marley and Marlin. Good. Shout out to you guys. Good. Good. Thank you for being a guest thank on you. the AdCast. Thank you. Awesome. This was great.